Let's recapitulate very briefly. We're now traveling on the first leg of our homiletical journey, which is called the Highway of Understanding. Now, the last time we dealt with one of three factors involved in this course about which we need to get some deep understanding, <coughs> namely you, the students involved in this enterprise. And we tried to make clear why it is essential that we get some deep insight into your very guts. So the very nature of a course like this calls for fumbling with and messing with your person as potential preachers. In fact, every practical course should mess with your being. The courses in Christian education should mess with your being. Because when you teach, your being is helping to teach. When you when you preach, your being is helping to preach. When you uh, when you uh, when you do uh, counseling, your being is also helping to counsel. You cannot be a pony uh, with the person sitting next to you, trying to uh, communicate to him a meaning, and uh, what your words are saying and what your being is saying are contradictory. Every course in field five should be messing with and fumbling with your being. And we also try to make clear how we'll go about fumbling with and messing with your being by means of that TV camera and scheduled laboratory experiences. And that's why we can't let you go on that experience. You've got to find out some time to do it. And because we do not want to waste our time and misuse that equipment, we gave some words of caution and admonition about presenting ourselves on them to properly. Because we ain't got no time and no electricity, have we? To waste, have we? No, sir. Well, on a monkey jumping on those tubes with his eyeballs searching the ceiling yeah. like he does not know what he's talking about. Right. Or like he's lying. Mm -hmm. And we ain't got no time and no electricity to be wasting on a monkey popping his lips and trying to be reificated. Well, like some phony colored folks. Well, do it when they're talking to white folks. Well, well. Because we did not set up that schedule and buy that equipment and plan to be there. Mm -hmm. For no lions. And for no phonies. Yes. What we're really concerned to accomplish is to get some insight on the real you by means of that TV camera. For nothing less than that is holy and acceptable to God or to men as your reasonable TV laboratory serve. So that was what we wrestled with the last time, wasn't it? Huh? As we endeavor to make clear our concern to inspect your very guts by means of that TV equipment so that we can be in better position to work with you and on you as potential preachers this year. Now today, on page two now, we come to deal with a second of the three factors involved in this course about which we need to get some deep understanding. Namely, me, the teacher involved in this enterprise. Now let me begin this second aspect of our understanding adventure by making this declaration. Namely, that at least 50%, at least 50% of successful classroom experience has to do with students getting a line on who the teacher is as a person. Now that statement might sound like a grand piece of nonsense to some fool in our midst. And we always have some. At least one. Well. Because when a fool enters a class, such an idiot foolishly thinks that his only and main business is to master the subject matter. Well. To the exclusion of mastering the teacher matter. Amen. And that is exactly why I can think of no better term to describe such an idiot than refer to him as a fool. Well. He ain't no scholar. Well, no matter how much green matter he has in his peanut head. Well, no matter how high his 
His IQ is rated on an intelligence test. He still ain't nothing but a floppy headed fool. Hey, well, hey. If he does not take into serious account that non rational, mm -hmm. unpredictable, hey. contrary yes. personal dimension mm -hmm. of the teacher hey. in that classroom, that yeah. a crucial factor <laughs> that must be reckoned with in any successful classroom experience. Hey. Yes, now, really, really, it should not be necessary to document this claim about the teacher matter being a crucial factor in successful learning. Mm -hmm. For the evidence of fools entering classes with fools' idea on this teacher matter is too abundant right here on this campus. Mm -hmm. And more than likely, abundant right here in this room. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Many fools right here on this campus, and possibly some in this room, have had some bad learning experiences at ITC. Well, yeah. All because those fools went into some classes with the crazy idea right. that the only and main business was to master the subject matter mm -hmm. to the exclusion of the personality matter of the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yet there are many fools in our midst with a whole lot of brain matter who have been hurt real bad mm -hmm. in their academic pursuits, yeah. having gotten their academic rumps tore up and still tore, well, mm -hmm. all because they disregarded teacher understanding in the learning situation. And that is exactly why I say again that such an idiot, even with a high IQ, just simply ain't no scholar. He ain't nothing but a fool. Nothing but a flappy headed fool. Well, for instance, I'm sure that everybody here accepting the fools now. We ain't talking no fools now. The fools are going well, to get some rest. Well. <laughs> I'm sure that everybody here accepting the fools would realize that, that realize that every teacher has his personal hangups. Amen. Just like everybody else. Yes, sir. And just because some of us teachers have PhDs does not alter the fact about all of us having our personal hang-ups about something or other. Well, For having a whole lot of education does not necessarily solve a single one of our personal hang-ups. Well, you can have PhDs and be as stupid in your emotions as an idiot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Hey. You got a whole lot of them faculty. Good point. Well, good point. Yeah. That you need to realize that about. Yep. You got some hang-ups. Mm -hmm. You need to know what those hang-ups are. Hey, well, good point. PhDs have guilt complexes and inferiority complexes and neuroses and psychoses just like everybody else. Hey, well, good point. Good point. So having a teacher with a whole lot of education in his head. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a dad bastard thing to do with helping us to resolve an issue of teacher understanding concerning his guts? Hey. And hey. any idiot who does not recognize this fact just simply cannot be no scholar. Well. He ain't nothing but a fool. Well. And a flappy headed fool well. at that. Hey. Yes. <laughs> 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 Let's be a little bit more concrete about this. Suppose, for example, one of us teachers has a serious hang-up about students challenging his position in class. Well, well. <laughs> 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 Take it down. Well, you don't worry about that. I don't want nobody for, 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 for that. That's all right. Though. I don't want nobody for that. Well. Gets upset beyond control. Mm -hmm. When a student contradicts him, the contradicts his position and tries to prove him wrong publicly. Well, my lord. Mm. Now, if you know that about that particular teacher, know that he can't stand that, then why in the devil would one pick an argument with that particular teacher in a public class session? Well, well. And then expect to pass that course. Well, you would be made a hundred percent. On every one of his tests. 
Now it might seem to a fool that he ought to pass that course, especially with a hundred percent on every test. But the plain fact is that such a fool ain't got bad. Except possibly with a D minus. Ah, well. Uh, and if he gets a D minus under those crazy circumstances, such a fool ain't got no business heading for the grade committee with those exam papers with 100% on them to prove that he deserves more than a D minus. Well. In fact, the monkey should be hauling his boom boom to the altar to thank God for making a way out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. well, what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. what? Yes, sir. No, the man can't stand that. Yes, sir. No, you make him born and mad when you do it. Hmm? No, that that is his personal hang up. Amen. Hey. Hey. And you do it anytime, anyhow, every time you hear that man man say it. No, you ain't got no business heading for the grade committee about that he minus under no circumstances. You need to haul your book and book to the altar of God to thank your God for amazing grace to shake a fool like you with that perfect he minus. Very few persons. Very few persons have ever passed courses playing a fool's game like that. Mm -hmm. So you would be blessed Amen. with that D minus mm -hmm. under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And should praise your God to high heaven for it. Amen. No sorry, I still say that such an idiot just simply cannot be no scholar. Even if he has the brain of an Einstein. Well. And I'll tell you something else about such an idiot. Ain't no use in a fool like that licking their wound and telling that bald faced lie about having suffered in Jesus' name. Well. <laughs> well. For such an idiot suffered and got duped and bruised all because he was merely and simply a fool. Well. All because he was a flappy headed fool and not because Jesus or the Christian religion had a thing to do with it. So under those circumstances, don't be lying in Jesus' name about that. Come on up, come on up. Because that ain't no cause being born for Jesus. That is really a devil cross which a monkey puts on his own back. But the concern here is not to justify getting a D minus for a work. And we have to. Not that of giving license to mean teachers who vent their personal hang ups by handing out low grades. We ain't trying to prove that. Because a little down dirty rat like that ain't got no business being on no faculty nowhere. Mm -hmm. And if you find a monkey acting like that, the students should not report him, should not report him to the grade committee. Well, that would not be the just thing to do. Don't take him to the grade committee. The just thing to do would be to get together and flip that monkey's back! Because <laughs> he ain't got no business getting off with a mere report. Amen. He needs his butt tore up Amen. Amen. So the import of the point here is not to justify a rat on the faculty. Well. When we ad advocate the mastery of teacher matter as a priority in successful classroom experience. But rather, we are, we are suggesting that the person of the teacher is a legitimate part of the equation in the classroom situation. And if anyone is to work out that classroom equation confidently, the fact of the fairness of the teacher cannot be omitted from consideration. 
And because I know that you need some insight on the teacher part of this classroom equation, I feel obligated to throw some light on this shady character ordained of God to lead you in this learning experience this year. So prepare to put thy shoes off again as we endeavor to lead you into the Holy of Holies about some peculiarities of this stranger's character. Now in my endeavor to throw some light on this stranger's shady character, we will follow somewhat the format assigned to you. Namely, now you don't see all this, you don't see this, but this does nothing on the table. So we just talk about it. Namely, sharing some personal data and some convictional data. Just like you were assigned to do. All right, let's start with the uh, personal data. Now, my full name, I don't know whether I should give it to you or not. Give it. No, I don't know you're afraid of or not. Give it. My full name is Isaac Rufus Clark Jr. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> so I let you in on my middle name that I never use since you and I are supposed to be close friends. <laughs> by now. <laughs> now I can't tell you why I don't like it, but I just don't like it at all. That's all I know. Okay, let's talk about my parents for a little bit. Now they're both alive and doing fairly well, I hope. In the 70s and uh, growing old. Now in my life, my mother was a dis disciplinarian of the family. She whooped your butt <laughs> night and day all the time! <laughs> Wait a minute! You can't think! Just look at her and she did it. And my father, and my father uh, was uh, came from a long line of preachers getting that beyond, I recall, some of us back in slavery, the clubs were preachers. Well, I don't know where, where it began. And I uh, have a hang-up with that monkey, because he thinks that I'm out of the ministry now. Because I'm not in, uh, in, in the pastorate, that's all he knows. Uh, it's the pastorate, you see. Yeah. And uh, every time I go home, that's why I hate to go home and see the monkey. But uh, I have to go home every night before they go in order to die, I feel like you have a guilt complex. But anyway, every time I go, go home, we have an argument. About when I'm going back to the ministry. <laughs> 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 That's all we talk about. That's how I come to the monkey house. <laughs> well, anyway, a long time ago, we solved that problem. So I don't have a hang up with the monkey anymore. I can go home now. Anyway, we solved that problem because I told him, well, he got to talking about um, all he's done for me. Well, now that's a dirty uh, trick to play on old child, isn't it? Yeah. So, what all you've done for him. Oh, you live no light here, you telling me? You ain't going back into the ministry! Who are you? Thank you, Lord! I'm under teaching my friends! You! So one time, long time ago, I told him this. I said, well, now, I thought that you, what you had done for me was a gift. But if you say it's alone, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to add it all up in terms of what you give me in the first 18 years of my life because then you will support me. Support me. Uh, put on 6% interest <laughs> and give me 18 years to pay it back. <laughs> I thought it was a gift! <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, right. you said it's a loan, stand it up, and I'll pay you back, because I'm going to be my own man! Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I'm going to live my life! Ha! Well, that's all right. Take with it up. Hey! And some of you need to tell your papa to know that too. Hey, my lord. Hey. Go ahead and call it still. Hey, take your case to court. Well, you better live your own life! Yes, sir! Because yes. you're accountable for it. Hey, well, uh, I like that, though. 
Now, reference to my sibling, Richard, I was the fourth and last child in a family of two girls and two boys. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. With the oldest daughter, now what we do? That's on that. That's that. Oh. Oh. Hey, I need to go back and get my towel now, see. Uh, 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 the fourth and last child in the family, two girls and two boys, with the older da oldest daughter now being deceased. I was most closely attached to my oldest sister, who died. We were just like two peas in a ball. In fact, uh, my mother was sick most of my early life, and she did the most uh, uh, take care. I guess that's why she became attached to her. But I was very tight to my, my older sister, and so we just knew, just knew we could just even sit a single across the room and know that we were saying something funny. Well, because that's how close we were to each other. Um, I always admired, but didn't like, my elder brother, who was next in line. I admired him because he was a fine athlete, could do anything in athletics, but he was low down and dirty in person. Always some dirty tricks to be on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my, my sister, who was just before me, and I always fought like cats and dogs. Well, yeah. Now she could whoop me. <laughs> but I could get her a whooping for whooping me to the side of the day. <laughs> I kept my mama on love for every day. <laughs> but we were very close. We, we fought on her. We, 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 we were real close. Too. My brother and I were the only ones who worked out too close. So we were just there together. Maybe I was just, maybe I just, uh, didn't, yeah, didn't, it's a good choice. <laughs> anyway, let me see where I was going. I was born and raised in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, a town of about 43,000 then, which has dwindled now to about 38,000 because they've been losing jobs in the place, which is located in western Pennsylvania near Ohio, about 16 miles from Youngstown, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, the major industry in that town when I was growing up was the tin mill, mm -hmm. but now it is famous for its pottery. And if you look under the dishes, you will see, uh, in, the, in the dining hall, you will see Shenango pottery, might quite possibly, on the bottom of some of them, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Now, educationally, I attended the Newcastle public schools all my life, which, by the way, were always integrated. We ain't got to do no buses. So, this way, you know, do no buses. Always integrated. Always. And was an excellent academic foundation uh, form. Got a good school in the public schools of New I have no regrets about my foundation education there. In fact, most of my friends during my youth were white fellows. Hmm? Mm. That's why y'all don't present a problem to me back then. Mm. Now, to some folks, you might present a problem, but you don't present none to me because most of my, my friends during my youth were white fellows. About 2,000 blacks in a town of about 43,000, so you don't have too much of a problem. With the schools integrated, and if you don't tell my wife, I'll tell you this. I even had some white girlfriends. My Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. Which is common there even now. It is. Because of having lived and gone to school together all our lives. In fact, uh, there was a little girl I was named C-A-L-A and C-L-E. She liked me and I didn't like her. And she would embarrass me every day in class. She'd sit behind me and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> me, and, uh, I'd, you know, you'd be sitting in those chairs and you'd have your boom up boom up you know, <laughs> hanging down over them cracks in the chairs, and she'd take her knee and rub it on my boom up <laughs> 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 Now, if you tell my wife about that, I'm going to flunk. But anyway, because I've been with white folks all my life uh, for so long, my daddy and mama insisted that I go to a colored college. Well, and therefore, I went to Will Forge University and from there to Boston University. 
So that is what some of my personal background is like, <coughs> which I'm sure has a lot to do with the kind of person confronting you now for good or for ill. Okay. Now, in reference to some confessional data uh, concerning this stranger, let me refer you to item number three. You see, <coughs> on our lecture outline. You got one, uh, you, yeah. Uh, now, Willie, Willie is going to be with us um, next semester. He's going to be my assistant teacher. That's why he's coming here now to see what's going on. We had two assistant teachers and Willie already, even before he went up to uh, Philadelphia, knew that I was calling him back uh, to be one of my assistants because uh, he is somebody. Well, and uh, I think next time I'll just let you uh, inter introduce yourself. I just have you uh, sign up today. It is if you're here. I'm not being here next time. I'm going to forget about you. All right. Okay. All right. Dr. Can I ask you this question? Go ahead. Oh, and if you put out a rumor that she was going to have a certain woman working uh, at the private or two or something like that? Who? A student or two. A teacher at the private school. No. How did it? No, we don't want no women in here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back and get my towel for them. Alright. <laughs> okay, don't pay three now. Don't pay on item number three. Item. Okay, let's let's get over that. Now there on, on on item number three, I'm putting up a profound premise laid down by Dr. Briggs at our faculty workshop a couple of years ago. And that's the premise on which I want to build uh, my conviction fictional revelation. Now, Dr. Briggs began his speaking with a profound statement like this. Now, we ain't, we ain't, on, we ain't on all of them pages. Now, we're doing some of them pages, but we're on page number two, man. Page number two. No, page number two. He's got page number three there. Page number two. That's right. I'm not just talking about who we're trying to play. This is what he said. He said, if there is a work that is lost to us that needs to be recovered, that lost word would be integrity. Integrity. That is the lost word that we desperately need to recover in our experience. He said, now that profound premise struck a deep chord in my being. For I too am convinced that that is the word that most men in our times have lost and desperately need to recover. Mm -hmm. And not recovering it merely as a verbal word to be spoken, but also recovering it as a being word to be lived with daily. Mm -hmm. Integrity. That is a lost word we desperately need to recover in word and in deed in our daily experience. So if you ask me what the church ought to be about in these times, there is more truth I would see about recovering that lost word in our experience called integrity. Well, I was so getting ready now, my brother, uh, my brother uh, Eddie. Well, I was so impressed by the profound premise that I made it my business to look up the word in the dictionary, mm. with the hope of at least recovering that lost word in a verbal sense to begin with. And this is what the dictionary had to say about that lost word. It defined the word integrity. Integrity that way, as you see it on page on item four A, which says what, brother Ed? Great. Now, now don't don't read it too fast now. Okay. Space or quality of being complete. That's right. Completeness. Huh? Look at those. An unimpaired state of being. Unimpaired. An impaired, unimpaired state of being. Unimpaired state of being. 